Hey, everybody. Welcome back again to the Words of Life podcast and our weekly Bible study. Hello, Kevin. Hey, Adam. How you doing? I am awesome. It is very good to see you. Anything new this week? Uh, new this week? Um, well, uh, when we were recording this, it's just past Valentine's Day. We had our annual uh, Valentine's Day party that we host every year uh, for, you know, Melissa and I started this 10 years ago. And uh, we invite people over from church, and, and they're always themed in different ways. And this year was yeah. the uh, Olympics, right? Melissa's a big Olympics fan. Nice. Uh, so we uh, had everyone assigned countries and colors, and they came over, and we had these minute-to-win-it style games, basically, and uh, kept track of the points, right? And then uh, the winners got, uh, you know, that bronze, silver, and gold plastic medals uh, were, the, were the prizes for winning. But everyone brought yeah. foods from the countries they represented. So we had a uh, quite a good uh, spread of uh, That's fantastic. Of dinner. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, us us always living, well, since you guys have started doing that, you started when, when you were already in Arizona. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And so we've, we've never lived in the same city together while you were doing that. So we've never been able to go. You'll have to and, come out one year for yeah. uh, Valentine's Day and We've always been a little a little jealous because you guys throw like like this cool party. I'm like we want to come to that. So tell me a uh, real quick. Tell everybody. Um, can you just name like the top top five or some of the themes you've done that have been really popular? Oh man! So this one was really popular. I mean, everyone seemed to have a really good time. It's very you know active and engaging in that way. Mm -hmm. People enjoy trying different dishes. But uh, you know, some of my favorite ones. We did a. Um, uh, night on the red carpet where everyone had to dress as like movie couples, not actual actor and actresses. So like Melissa and I went as uh, Mary Poppins and, and Bert, right? Okay. And people came, you know, as different couples, right? For our different uh, guy and girls from different movies. Uh, so that was fun. We did a, um, a pirate themed one a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, we uh, actually have it sitting over here still uh, dressed up as, you know, pirates and, we made, I made my own tricorn hat there out of a hat. I found a goodwill. That's awesome. So, you know, uh, that one was a fun one. Uh, we've done masquerade. We did an amazing race one year where people had to go all over town to different yep. sites and do different challenges and send them back to us. Yeah, we actually replicated that one time. Just had yeah. a, a party one time, an amazing race party. It was it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Of so, fun. yeah. Uh, I mean, a lot of them Very have been cool. fun. Yeah. Very cool. Well, I... Um, uh, yeah, just been really busy. The uh, you know work works picking up, which is good for me. You know, yeah. and uh, you know been uh, you know we had uh, you know the, today is as we're recording this is the the nineteenth President's Day, so yeah. kind of had a slightly relaxing day. Did some work, but uh, not not a ton. And uh, back to the grind tomorrow. So yep. it'll be be very very fun. So right on. Well, let's get into our study. Um, uh, if if, uh, if as long as the audience is caught up, <laughs> we. Uh, We've done seven episodes so far devoted to the book of Colossians, and we're right near the, the tail end of it, and we should be able to wrap up the book of Colossians and, as promised, uh, go right into the book of Philemon today. So let's hop right in. Oh, add to the stage. So we finished last week as we were discussing um, the practical nature of what Paul had had been instructing them uh like how how do we you know, put our faith into action and we talked about you know the, the different roles we're going to find ourselves in throughout our lives um for you know women might be a wife husbands are going to be married to wives and um you know we have these instructions about how to to live in the way that that paul is instructing them and right there at the unfortunate chapter break um he finally got to talking about masters treating your bond servants justly and fairly, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. And that's pretty much where we uh, where we finished off. Uh, do you have any um, any more you want to add to that? No, I just think, you know, as we jump into the next piece here, right, which is sort of the last bit of his instructions in two through six, you know, they, they kind of go with what's happened before, even though it's not directly relational, right, where it was very much wives, husbands, children, right? Like it was very much specifically, and you don't see something here in verse two, right? Um, right. But remember, all of this goes back to sort of 
uh, basically maybe 17, 317, where he's talking about these things and all you do in word or deed, right? And let it be seen in your actions and these kinds right. of things there. Um, and so then this is how you do that. And you know, you're still getting that once you get here. Here are some more actions. What does it look like? You know, so I always think about it, you know, in family, in work, and then you know, what's next in prayer and out in the world, right? <laughs> right and that right. kind of completes the whole set of this is what a super, super synopsis type view of the Christian life looks like, right? Uh, Perfect. And so that's kind of how that goes here. Well, why don't you go ahead and read uh, two through six for us and then we'll uh, we'll finish it up. Yeah, we'll do. So it says, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Fantastic. So one of the questions that pops into my mind when I read this section is when he starts by saying, continue steadfastly in prayer. The question is, how are we to be watchful and what are we watching for? Yeah, right. Like that's uh, interesting that this idea of prayer is a way in which we are on guard or a way in which we are alertly watching, um, you know, and so I don't often think that we think about prayer maybe in that way, right? right. That, that is, it's prayer is how I, I, I walk the walls of my life, right? How I'm mm -hmm. on guard and how I'm watching alertly for different things. Uh, and I think as he's maybe thinking here, I, you know, or at least if I was a reader who got this letter, I don't know if Paul was thinking this when he wrote it, but if I was a reader when I got this letter, I would be thinking of the things he had just said to me, right? That how do I make sure as a husband that I love my wife and not become harsh with them? How do I make sure as a father, right? That I am not provoking my children and discouraging them, right? How do I, as a master or as a slave, how do I do that? How do I make sure of those things? Well, I have to be steadfast in prayer. That's how I'm going to be alert and watchful in those areas of my life, right? Um, sort of the idea is that this is how we're going to accomplish those things, you know, that I'm pointing up, like that's on the screen there. Uh, th those things that are just above, right, that he had just talked about. Uh, that, that That's that's how I do it. It's how I keep a watch on on what I'm doing and on, on my life, right? Well, it, it also uh, helps to have intent in in our prayer. Right. It's not just something that we do because we think we need to do it. There's a really good purpose for prayer that he's giving us here to, to be watchful in it, but not just to be like like a guard dog, but with Thanksgiving. Right. Yeah. So there's this attitude of I'm so thankful for what I've been given. And now I want to make sure that I'm taking care of me, a good caretaker of those things by being, being watchful. Yeah. And that goes back, I think, to, you know, 15 through 17 of chapter three, right? If you remember what that looked like, as he's talking about each of those things that we talked about, you know, the, the word in your heart. Yeah, there we go. Uh, you know, the peace of Christ is in your heart to which you are called in one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your heart to God, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. Right. So all right. of those aspects, right. Of, of life there are tied into this thankfulness thing. And so then when yep. he jumps forward here, right, it's being watchful in prayer with Thanksgiving. Right. And so it just, yeah. should, it's like a bookend, right. To the, yeah, just in case I hadn't mentioned it before, yeah. make sure it's with Thanksgiving. Right. Yeah. You've got these thankfulness in, and then you've got these instructions and then you've got prayer with Thanksgiving sort of bookends, both, yep. both sides of that, uh, those statements there, right. About yeah. the different aspects of life. Uh -huh. And then, you uh, know, as he kind of opens that up into that, you know, he has specific things in mind as well. He, this is a request on his part, right? At the same time, pray for us, right? So he he asks them, hey, keep being steadfast in prayer. And while you're at it, right? And also, could you, right, uh, pray for us as well? Uh, and that's always interesting to me. Um, you know, I think about the Apostle Paul asking these people to pray for him, right? That and one is, you know, that a door would be open to the word. That, that's fine, right? Give us opportunities, right? But then, and make it clear, which is how I ought to speak, right? So, you know, he's asking them, pray to God that I would have this sort of ability. When you think, you know, maybe in my own mind, there's anyone who should have had it down and didn't need other people praying for him. 
on how to speak. It'd be Paul, right? It'd be one of the apostles. He's got the Holy Spirit, you know. Um, but he's telling them to, to steadfastly pray for them that he could declare that mystery of Christ in a clear way. Yep. And as as we go on from there, <clears throat> you know, this this idea of, of prayer um, is obviously is 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 throughout the letter. It, he's, he starts off the letter yeah. with prayer and he says, I'm praying for you all the time. And, you know, now he's asking for them to also pray for him. Uh, and, and pray specifically. So, you know, I'm, I just wonder sometimes, uh, both in like self-reflection, knowing that my prayer life could use a boost and I wish I were as diligent as, as Paul seems to be praying all the time for these people. And then how many men or, or people that are out there really <laughs> actively seeking and doing the work in, in the world should I be praying for that they also would be able to declare the mystery of Christ and they would have the ability to say the right words at the right time in the right way with the spirit, you know? Um, so I would encourage us all to, to, you know, take some time, write, write some names down and just start praying for, for those people. So. Yeah, and I think some of you know people who maybe may be listening are I, I imagine many of the people listening probably go to church and are, are religious in some way, right? Um, and if not, glad you found us. Um, but if you're thinking about it, you know, you hear this sometimes. Maybe you're at church on Sunday and there's a prayer before the, you know, sometime in the service before the minister gets up, right? And you know, uh, they'll they'll pray something similar to this, right? Be with whoever is given the lesson today, right? That they could. Uh, speak the message clearly and, you know, have a, 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 a classic a ready, a ready recollection, right. Right, a ready recall of the things <laughs> they've studied. Um, I don't know who was the first person to, to coin that one, man, but it, it caught on apparently. Um, right. And so you, you, you'll hear that sometimes, but my guess is that, you know, for many people, that's the only time during the week that that prayer gets prayed perhaps yeah. right uh, in the minutes right before uh, someone's going to get up and speak. Uh, and so you're right. It, it's an encouraging thing maybe to think about to say, Hey, you know, if you're at somewhere where you, you have a, a local preacher, right. Add yeah. them to your list all the time, not just the Sunday morning prayer, right. Before he gets up to speak. Right. Uh, exactly. if you know, if people doing work in other parts of the world, right. Mm -hmm. Or any, anything like that. Right. Uh, other places, certainly. Um, I think that's, so. if it, again, like I said, if it's good enough for Paul, right. Then certainly it, it's good enough for me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just kind of going along with that, it's a little sidebar conversation. Um, uh, Megan's uh, back in, in Clovis this week, and uh, our our congregation out there, um, they'd been, they have a, a really good relationship with this this minister in South Africa. His name is John Stoltz. And this guy was doing so much good work, and I say it in the past because he, he just passed away. Mm -hmm. And um, my prayer was that man, I, I just pray that somebody is there yeah, a new and one, right? take up take up the mantle of yeah. his work and continue it because he was bravely going across the border into Zimbabwe. Dangerous, dangerous job and bringing food and, and, and water and whatever people needed, sometimes money um, and he was planting churches out in the, the wastes of Zimbabwe, you know, this, these little tiny villages and things. And his story was very inspiring. And uh, I've always applauded and really appreciated his, his diligence and his bravery. Uh, and, and now he's passed away. Uh, um, so, but yeah, so it's people like that. If you're aware of them, pray, pray, pray. So certainly. Yep. 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 So then he goes into verse five, um, with this admonition to walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. And I think that goes kind of along the way the lines of what we were just talking about is speaking clearly. Well, when do you need to speak clearly? Well, all the time, but when does it really matter? Yeah. Is when you have an opportunity to, to bring the truth and the hope of Christ and the mystery of Christ, as he just talked about, um, to light in somebody else's life. You can pass on the message of Christ and the hope of salvation. And the only way off of this planet uh, is through Christ, you know? Yeah. And sort of, you know, as you, as it's a nice little tie up here to how he's been talking, right? What is, what is, 
you know, going back, what, what do God's holy beloved people look like, right? right? Well, this is how they look in their families. This is how they look in their, in their work for lack of a better proxy here for slaves and masters. This is what they look like in their prayer lives or their prayer. And this is what they look like to the world, right? How, how do you conduct yourself in the world? What's that got to look like there? Right. Um, and yeah, I, I sort of grab, you know, if I was going to say, what are the, what are the things I do? Right. Well, there's kind of three of them there, right. That, that we, you know, what are we? Well, we're, we act wisely, right. When we're out in the world, we got to act wisely. We got to be thinking about how we act. We have to be uh, careful with what we do and how, how we, how we behave ourselves. Right. Um, we've got to be opportunistic, right. This, this idea of making the best use of the time or, uh, you know, taking those opportunities that present themselves kind of how he said before, right. Open a door for the word. Now here he's telling them, right. Walk in wisdom and make the best use uh, of yeah. the opportunities of the time. Right. And then we got to speak grace. We have to be careful how we speak. Right. Those are kind of the three things he says, the world that, that how a good Christian behaves in the world. Right. Yep. You walk wise, you're opportunistic and you are speaking grace. Right. That that's what we do um, and how we behave ourselves out there. Um, and that idea there is that you can give an answer and know how to answer each person. Right. Yep. Um, which suggests, you know, that there's different ways to handle different people. And there's different ways to handle different situations, right? Right. Um, and, and what's what's required um, for the for the season or the situation that's there, right? For sure. Uh, but those four things, right, that we, we saw there, then you know, family, work, prayer, and, and in the world is sort of how we show ourselves to be God's holy people, right? Um, you know, and that's that's kind of an interesting little conclusion, if you will, right? Because if you remember way back as Paul was going through this letter, right? Um, he's talking about this mystery of the gospel, right? That's Christ in you, right? And this thing that he's been revealed, that's now been revealed. Um, he pointed out these ideas that, you know, there's no other tradition or teaching or these things, they're all foolishness, right? And so it's, you know, you compare that, right? And it's like, there's no other mystery. There's no other secret revelation. There's no other special tradition or anything. It's as simple as this, folks, right? Like, this is it. You know, do a good job in your family, do a good job in your work relations, yep. pray and be wise in the way you act in the world, right? Like, yep. that's that's how we remain steadfast to the preeminent Jesus that he talked about in all the way back in chapter one, right? Yeah. And of course, uh, we have to use tasty words. That's right. Seasoned yeah. with salt. Got to be tasty. So uh, that, that really kind of concludes uh, the the instructions for Christian living. And uh, we'll go ahead and continue on to the, the last section of chapter four here, which uh, are, are properly entitled, you know, the final greetings. Okay. <clears throat> and it says there, starting in verse seven, it says, Tych Tychicus, Tychicus, I ne never can say that out loud properly. Tychicus will tell you all about my activities he is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are, and that he may encourage your hearts, and with him Onesimus, our faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you. They will tell you of everything that has taken place here. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you, and Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, concerning whom you have received instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him. And Jesus, who is called Justice, these are the only men of the circumcision among my fellow workers for the kingdom of God, and they have been a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you, always struggling on your behalf in his prayers, that you may stand mature and fully assured in all the will of God. For I bear him witness that he has worked hard for you and for those in Laodicea and in Hierapolis. Luke, the beloved physician, greets you, as does Demas. Give my greetings to the brothers at Laodicea and to Nympha and, her, and the church in her house. And when this letter has been read among you, have it also read in the church of the Laodiceans. And see that you also read the letter from Laodicea. And say to Eric uh, Archippus, see that you fulfill the ministry that you have received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. All right. So what do we what do we take from this here, Kevin? This this last little final final greeting of Paul. 
Yeah, so, you know, there's a couple of interesting little notes or things to pick up. I think the, the big thing you pull out of this is just the vast number of people he's talking about, right? Which, again, sort of suggests, like he had said before, that he hadn't really met these people or known them. And so it seems like he's trying to list a bunch of people that, hey, we have fellow people we know, right? Like kind of a thing. Um, and, you know, some of this is, is obviously... Um, really a, a product of its time, right? Like communication is difficult. I'm going to write a letter somewhere. Any and everyone who wants to send greetings, now's the time to do it, right? <laughs> like pop them in there and get, oh, and Luke says hi. And you know, everyone who, here's, here's another person, here's another person who wants yeah. their greetings to you because, you know, I can't just shoot you a text, right? Or pick up the phone or even just drop a letter in the mail, right? Is, is, a, is a challenge, right? So some of that's what's going on here for sure. But, you know, there's some interesting things in here. Um, I think when we had chatted on a little bit, this idea that there's a small number of, of Jewish people that are were among Paul's uh, group, right? Uh, he, that he calls his fellow workers among the circumcision, which means all the rest of these people are are Gentiles, right? Or, yep. uh, or converts to Judaism, perhaps in some way. Um, but, you know, for the most part, they're, they're Gentiles like the uh, Colossian church uh, is predominantly. So uh, we see that kind of laying out in here. Um, yep. You know, two things of interest that, you know, one we'll touch on in a minute, right? This idea of Onesimus, right? Who that's, that's the connection that we see to Philemon, right? He's he's the guy right. who's carrying this letter along with Tychicus, and mm -hmm. then we'll see over there, right? That he says, "I sent I sent Onesimus back to you," right? Uh, and he has some instructions about him, uh, and so that's that's sort of the tie-in there um, to between the two letters. Um, you know, one thing I find interesting as well is this down at the bottom, this idea of um, you know, hey, greet the brothers at Laodicea and. When this you've read this letter, send it over to them. And hey, they got a letter from me, and you read that when it comes over to you, right? Uh, kind of deal, which, which is interesting because it tells us a couple of things. One, that these letters were being passed amongst the churches, right? It, it was intended that hey, I wrote this to you, Colossians, but make sure you get this over to someone else so they can learn the things that are in here, right? I, I want yep. this was how the gospel was going to be preserved effectively, right? Uh, after after all the apostles have moved on. Um, and so as we read it today, we, we're still participating in that tradition, right, I guess, of, uh, of reading these letters that were written. Uh, but the other ones is that there's letters that were written that, you know, we don't have preserved for us today, right? We don't have the letter to the Laodiceans. Um, and so that's fine, right? Uh, I suspect that means that we didn't need it. You know, I, I imagine that God is capable of preserving whatever he intended for us to have. Uh, so either we have it other places or, or whatever the case may be, right? But I mean, you see that sometimes, I think, in the Corinthian letters. We have First and Second Corinthians. There's good speculation that there was probably more than just two letters to the Corinthians as you kind of read through those those books, right? Um, and so you go, you know, this is what we've got, and we, we have all that we need uh, to be uh, equipped to do what God wants us to do, right? But there were other things mm -hmm. being written in the first century, right, that For uh, sure. Paul wanted them to know about. Right? Yeah, we, we don't see the church in Laodicea being predominant in a lot of the letters, yeah. However, uh, it was one of the seven churches of Asia that was written to yeah, or about mm -hmm. in the book of Revelation, yep. which is interesting. Yeah. Um, and so uh, they they were they were part, you know, they had a a, a candlestick or, yes. you know, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and they were uh, much loved by by the Lord. So, yep. Fantastic. Um, one of the things, yeah, you, you mentioned that, um, you know, we, we, we discussed this, uh, his statement about these are the only men of the circumcision among my fellow workers for the kingdom. He doesn't say that because of, of any inequality, because he, he'd already spoken about the fact that in Christ, right. all of these barriers are broken down. There's neither Jew nor Greek nor slave nor free, you know, Scythian, barbarian, all these things, right? Um, the only reason I can think that he is pointing that out is that for thousands of years, there's been this separation between Jew and Gentile. And regardless of the, the new status of Christianity bringing everybody together, those old feelings and those old uh, prejudices are still present, you know, I mean, for crying out loud, it, it, it's still being regurgitated today. And, you know, we've, we've had basically all for, in, in our country, we've had basically the same equal rights for everybody for a long time. And yet there's still this underlying, and I'm not just talking about white and black, but there's like, 
you know, the anti-Jew people and the you know, right. anti this and the anti that. There's always these factions. And so Paul says, hey, I'm living proof of I'm I'm putting my my money where my mouth is, basically. Like I I don't have any barriers between the the, the people I work with. In fact, I'm working with more Gentiles than I am with Jews, you know, and, and just so you can take my example and live like that as well. I think that's it's more of a you know, of an example of, of how to how to live. So yeah, and you know, he may also be thinking again, speculative here, but um, you know, when he says these are the only men of the circumcision among my fellow workers for the kingdom, I mean we know that what are called those of the circumcision, right? Those who are coming along saying you have to be circumcised to, you mm-hmm. know, uh to, to be in Christ, you have to keep the law of Moses, right? And he was always teaching against that, right? So he could also be saying, like, these guys are okay, watch out for any other ones that come saying, oh, I work with right. Paul, and, you know, he says, you got to do this, right? He yeah, said, no, no, right. no, these are the only ones among the circumcision that, that I'm vouching for here, you know, uh, watch yep. out for anyone else that comes in my name uh, and tells you otherwise. So. Fantastic. Well, listen, I have uh, really enjoyed uh, studying this book uh, with you, and uh, I hope everybody out there has also really enjoyed the book of Colossians. Uh, we didn't receive a lot of questions, um, some very positive, up- uplifting comments here and there, but we would really encourage you to, you, our audience, to be more engaging. Uh, you know, ask questions. Um, you know, we, we would love to to have a reason to dig into the word deeper and to be able to answer those questions for you. So as we transition into Philemon, which is a very short letter, um, keep that in mind. And um, also keep in mind the, the, the context of the letter of Colossians as we get into Philemon really matters. And this character Onesimus that he mentions here right at the end is a key factor in that letter to Philemon, which we'll get into right now. All right. Do you want to take the uh, the first little section, Kev? Sure. Uh, maybe we'll jump uh, through on over seven or so. Or Yeah, that's probably good. Uh, so it says, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our fellow worker, and Aphia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers, because I hear of your love and of the faith that you have toward the Lord Jesus and for all the saints. And I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. Awesome. So reading between the lines and doing just a little bit of research, um, it is commonly believed, uh, and I think there's ample proof that this is probably the case, um, Philemon is not a Jewish name, so he was uh, a Gentile, most likely a wealthy Roman citizen. Um, He was wealthy enough to uh, to have a church meeting at his house, which means he probably had a large house. He also, as we're going to continue to read, is wealthy enough to be a slave owner, to have bond servants and servants under him and and people that were indentured to him in some way. And um, Paul's opinion of him also is that he was he's a true believer in, in Jesus. He has a really good heart. He is doing what is right by people. And as we continue to read, we're going to find that, that Paul, Paul expects him to continue that with this particular case regarding Onesimus. Uh, what else do you see in the first section there, Kev? Yeah, I think all those things are, are right on, right? Uh, we, we also see our other connection here to, um, to the end of Colossians when you see Archippus, who's mentioned here. He's also mentioned the other one. He was told over there, um, mm-hmm. you know. Remind him not to neglect the uh, the charge, the gift, or whatever right. uh, at the at the end of that text. Take heed to the ministry that you've received in the Lord and fulfill it. Um, and so you see, oh, these wait a minute, these are the same thing. And then we'll see in a minute. I pray for Onesimus. Oh wait, okay. So we we know these two books. You know, these two letters came together very likely right at the same time. Yep. Uh, one to the larger group and one specifically uh, to him. Um, you know, so we, we see that playing out here. And you're right, we we understand some things about Philemon. Right, he's heard of his love for Jesus. 
Uh, he's heard his faith and his trust in Jesus. He's heard of uh, how the hearts of the saints have been refreshed, right? So he's, he's doing all these good things. Um, and, and so all this news has traveled, right, to, to Paul in some way. Um, one thing that I've always found a little bit interesting uh, in here um, is this, this statement, you know, uh, five, because I hear of your love and of the faith that you have toward the Lord Jesus, and for all the saints, which is, a, is a, a weird thing, right? It's weird to me because he says, I hear of your love and your faith towards the Lord Jesus and for all the saints. Well, am I just supposed to understand that he loved the saints or do he also have faith and trust in the fellow saints, right? Because uh, the way it's constructed it seems to be he also had faith and trust in in the saints that you know were part of his congregation, I assume, right? Um, which is, is good. It reminds me of things that I should... Um, I should have faith and trust in my my brothers and sisters, right? <laughs> um, I should have faith that they are of good intent, that they're seeking Jesus, that they're going to do what's right, right? Like that should be my default position about my brothers and sisters in the Lord, right? And, and that's just a good reminder because I think sometimes we think when we disagree with someone or whatever that, you know, we, we question their motives or their intents or what are they, what are they really trying, you know, and I think we'd probably be encouraged to uh, always assume that your brothers and sisters are trying their best to do what God wants, right? <laughs> uh, and they're, they're trying their best to understand what it is that Jesus is telling them to do and, and what the scripture is saying. You know, we should we should start from that position um, and have, have faith and trust in them. Um, and we're going to see here that that's what Paul does through this letter. He's, he's going to say things. He's, he, he speaks in ways that I know you're going to do this even more, right? I, I trust that this is, you're going to receive these things well, and you're going to do all that I ask, right? Uh, because that's the kind of person you are and because because you're a fellow brother in Christ. And I know if I tell you this is what Jesus wants you to do, you're going to do it, right? Because <laughs> that's what you're seeking. That's what you're after. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. that's that's really interesting to me, um, just, just the way that's kind of set up there, right? Yeah. Uh, so the, the New King James does uh, translate that. It's slightly different, and, and it is more inclusive. It, it says that hearing of your love and faith, which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints. Yeah. And I think one of the other ones I, I've looked at, it doesn't even say faith. It's like hearing your love and the trust you have toward the Lord Jesus and all the saints, right? Which, again, is a it's a common translation of that, um, yep. right? That you trust in the Lord Jesus and you trust in you trust in your brothers and sisters, right? To do to do sort of what's right. Um, and, you know, he's he's says here, um, I think I heard of the faith towards the love of Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective, right? Which is interesting because, you know, he's he's already said, you know, you've got all this stuff and the hearts of the saints have been refreshed in you. And yet he's, he's praying even for more, right. Uh, sort of this more and more kind of mindset that your faith will become effective, uh, for the full knowledge of every good thing. Right. So I want you to recognize all the good things that we have, uh, in Jesus, right. And that, that the fellowship you have with me and the fellowship you have with, with the brethren, uh, and your fellowship we have with Jesus will become really effective, right. Um, and I, I think what he's maybe thinking about is kind of this idea, like we've, we've talked about, I think several times, right? This, the debtor servant, right? Like, I want you to remember all the good things you have in Jesus and we'll see why in a minute. I'm going to ask you to do something. I want you to remember all the good things Jesus has done for you. Right. <laughs> um, and I'm going to, I'm going to pin that on you here, uh, in a minute yep. when I, when I say now make your faith really effective. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I just also think it's interesting how he has a different role and or relationship with the three people that he sends a letter to. Right. Philemon, our, our beloved fellow worker, you know, Appia, our sister and Archippus, our fellow soldier. Yeah. Right. Um, so almost like, you know, Philemon, you're a stay at home worker for the Lord. Archippus, you're a go out into the world seed spreader kind of soldier worker for the Lord, you know, and our sister Afia is uh, she's obviously um, taking a big role in that as well. Uh, you know, I don't know if they were if she was Philemon's wife. Yeah, I don't know that we know. I, I think a lot of suggestions are that this is probably that uh, Philemon and Afia are probably husband and wife, and Archippus maybe their son um, okay. because the church that meets in your house, right? So they're yeah. somehow in the same household, right? Yeah. Whatever that is, and so that's kind of maybe the most common perhaps a way to uh, say, well, how would you put these three people in household? Well, one's the kid and two are the parents, right? right. We don't know that, but it's a, it's a fine explanation, right? Yep. Um, 
but I do like this idea of this of Archippus, the fellow soldier, right? And and thinking back to, you know, the end of Colossians four, uh, take you to the ministry you've received and fulfill it, right? Which suggests that there was some sort of ministry or some sort of thing, right? That um, Archippus had been called to do, um, and that's why he's called a, a fellow soldier. You know, a lot of times uh, Paul will use that idea, fellow worker, or fellow soldier, meaning maybe that Archippus is is the 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 person who's the minister there, who is uh, taking care of a lot of the evangelizing in that area, uh, could yeah. be what's going on there as well. Awesome. Well, let's get into the next section here uh, as we kind of wrap up today's episode. But we'll set up uh, the rest of the letter here by reading this this next section here. In verse 8, it says, Accordingly, though, I, I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required. Yet for love's sake, I prefer to appeal to you. I, Paul, an old man and now a prisoner also for Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to you and to me. I'm sending him back to you, sending my very heart. I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel, but I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your goodness might not be by compulsion, but of your own accord. For this perhaps is why he was parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a bondservant, but more than a bondservant, as a fellow brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So we see here, that Philemon is uh, a, a slave owner, and Onesimus uh, was one of his bond servants, one of his slaves. And we don't know exactly what happened. There is speculation that there was some sort of an incident that uh, you know caused strife. Whether you know Philemon, whether Onesimus, sorry, uh, you know cheated Onesimus, cheated Philemon in some way, or you know did something, but Onesimus ran away, right? Yeah. He escaped. Yeah. Somehow that's the case, right? Onesimus has been separated from Philemon in some way. Um, and yeah, whether that's because he escaped, whether that's, I mean, I've even seen things where, you know, he came and has met Paul in some way, right? Um, could he have been sent by Philemon with whatever you go do this task, right? You get whatever, but in some way we, we know that he's, he was not in good standing because he says he was useless to you. Right. Right. Um, and so, yeah, the predominant sort of theory is somehow he's, he's a runaway slave or he's an escaped slave or, or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, the, the whole letter, right. is really going to center around this relationship here. And this is why he gets a separate call out from his own letter effectively. Right. And why this isn't part of Colossians. He's got a, he's got an ask of Philemon. He wants him to do something with this, with this yeah. situation here. Um, and so certainly we, we were thinking back then almost immediately, probably to the end of three and beginning of four, where he's talking about how slaves ought to behave and masters ought to behave. And, you know, remember you have a master in heaven and all of those kinds of things. Um, and, you know, now he's going to really call, which, you know, Philemon will read or hear when Colossians, the letter we call Colossians gets to them. Right. And now he's going to get a special call out of, Hey, okay. Make your, make your faith effective in the full knowledge, right, that you've got concerning concerning the things that I've just instructed in that letter uh, as much as anything here. But uh, it's, it's curious that he says right up front that he's going to make an appeal as opposed to commanding him anything, right? Um, Paul says, I, I could, I have the authority, I'm bold enough to command you in Christ to do something, to do what's required, but I'm not going to. All right. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Instead, I prefer to appeal to you for love's sake. Um, right. And that's hard to know whether that's, you know, Paul saying because of the love I have for you as a fellow brother or because of just love in general. I'm going to appeal to you for the sake of love that it should win out over command. Right. Um, but I'm going to make an appeal to you for for something here about about this guy on Um And, you know, it's it's interesting that, that he chooses to do that. He just says, look, I'm not taking the apostle role. I'm just an old man and I'm a prisoner for Christ, right? I'm in chains as we saw, you know, in, uh, in Colossians four there at the very end, remembering my chains. Yeah. Um, and so 
you know, I, I met this guy while I was imprisoned. Uh, this, he became a child. He became a, a Christian. He became a disciple. He became one of my children, as Paul will often refer to the, those people he converts, right? Um, and he says, I've, I've got a thing for you here. Um, you know, and we, we sometimes think about this letter. I think we've talked about this offline, right? That we think about Philemon some time ago. What am I supposed to do with this letter, right? Like, it's, it's very clearly uh, a strong reminder that I'm reading someone else's mail, right? Yeah. Um, I'm not the person that's written to here, right? Um, he does say, and the church in your house. So he intends the church to hear this there, right? But I don't have this relationship. I'm likely to never have this circumstance where I've got to deal with this, right, uh, in my life. So what do I do with this letter? But, you know, one of the things I think is interesting is we can kind of get two lessons just even out of these, you know, up through 10 here maybe, um, you know, that, look, one is God does the same thing with us, right? Like we go, oh, God commands us things all the time. And I go, well, yeah, sure. But does he really? I mean, he doesn't make you do anything, right? Right. Like his appeal to you is I'm appealing to you out of love. and I sent my son because I loved you so much, mm -hmm. right? I'm, I'm making an appeal on the case of my love for you. You don't have to do it, right? You know, I'm not forcing anyone to to follow him, right? This is the appeal that I make to you. Yep. Um, and sort of, you know, more personally, perhaps, you know, Paul feels constrained to say, um, I'm going to speak out on the behalf of someone else who is in no position to or cannot, right? But I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to interject myself. I'm going to step out and speak out for this one who, who is, who is the least of these, we might say using Jesus's words, right? Uh, and so am I supposed to take a lesson from that? Like, should I do the same? Am I supposed to speak out for those who have no standing and have no ability? I mean, he has no standing in, in Roman law, right? He has no standing to go and say, oh, I'm a slave. And I have these, right? But Paul steps in on his behalf. Um, and so I think it's a challenging thing for me to think about, you know, in, in what way should I be appealing on behalf of others who, who maybe cannot speak for themselves, right? Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a reminder, right? Uh, for sure. So I think that there's uh, there's one other lesson that um, that I see there for sure. I mean, there's tons, I'm sure. But yeah. uh, when we think about us growing older and what impact we have on the next generation, uh, Paul was never married. He didn't have his own children, but he was always adopting <laughs> right the yeah. these these young men who had so much promise and potential to to do great work in the kingdom of god and so you know lessons for for it's not just you know men mentoring young men but women also doing the same thing with young women identify people that that a need lifting up and B can be useful to to you and to to the church, and bring them in, adopt them, make put them to work, you know, give them a purpose. And I think that Paul, uh, that's one of the examples that I, I really appreciate about Paul is that a if if I could work like Paul, how much effectiveness could I have in the kingdom? And B if I, if I'm already working, I need to seek help with the work. I can't do it all myself. Yeah. And so, uh, those, those are, those are some of the things that I think we can, as, as takeaways for this week, you know, a let's tr try to work harder and B let's try to find people who can help us. Yeah. I, I mean, as you know, if we're getting close to time here, so I don't actually want to keep digging into the bottom right. half of this here. It's 11 through 15, <laughs> 16. I mean, there's a lot there as well, but certainly, yeah. um, you know, we've hinted there that he said he's, he's become useful to me, right? He's, he's a, he's a valued, um, he's a valued part of the kingdom. He's a valued part of my work. Right. And so there's certain things where you go, Oh, what value do I have to the kingdom? Right. Yep. Um, but, I mean, how much would you have liked the Apostle Paul? Like, who, who, you know, you're taking a poll. I don't know how you would even do this, right? Who is the most influential or the Apostle did the most, right? Um, it, that's a sort of foolish game to play. But, you know, as a Gentile, at least I could say, well, I'm glad for Paul because, you know, he's kind of the one who, you know, really spread this among the, the Gentile world. So that's certainly right. to my, my direct benefit. Well, um, the church in Corinth certainly had their ideas. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Right, yeah, I mean, yeah. 
Like, I'm, from I'm from a Paul. I'm from a Paulus. I'm from this uh, guy, right? They, for sure. they all wanted to jump in somebody's camp. Yeah. So, you know, when I say, you know, so to have the Apostle Paul say, hey, he's a useful person to, to my work, right? To, to my my ministry here. Um, and and that's quite a commendation, right? That he's, yeah. he's used me in that way. Um, and so we think about, you know, the body of Christ and each part plays its part, right? And, each, and we sometimes think of, you know, oh, I'm not as important because I'm just a I'm just a hand or I'm just a foot or I'm just a whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, and here is a, as effectively, you know, if we're going to take the position, he's a runaway slave. Yeah, here's a runaway slave um, who Paul himself says he's useful to my work in the kingdom. He helps me advance the kingdom here um, because I'm imprisoned. Right. And, and he's useful to me there in some way. Um, and in fact, he says, I really, I'd really like to keep him here because that's how useful he is. And so certainly we, you know, like we say, we might have considered from a worldly standpoint him to be one of the least of these, right? And yet in the kingdom, he has value uh, and value to Paul for what he can do. Well, that is a good place for us to break. We will continue this discussion next week as we uh, as we finish up. And we'll, we'll, we will be able to I think, oh, yeah. finish up the book of Philemon for sure. It's a very short letter. Uh, again, though, if you have any needs or questions uh, along the way, please don't hesitate. Take a little bit of time, uh, drop us a little line, whether it's on YouTube or in Facebook or wherever, uh, or send us an email. Uh, we, we would really genuinely love to hear from you. Um, your encouragement always lifts us up, and uh, we will be praying uh, for the success of, of God's word and God's message to be proclaimed everywhere uh, by us and by you. And uh, we really appreciate you. So. Thank you, Kevin. Very uh, good seeing you and studying the word with you again. Yeah, uh, always a good time. And uh, we'll talk again next week. Absolutely. All right. See you later, everybody. Good night.